Hi there. This is a video of uh, my practice today. Um, I will give you some instructions on how to move the body uh, as soon as we get moving. So there will be more instruction in the beginning and far less as the practice goes on. So it's kind of like a sneak peek into some of the things I like to do. And um, you just follow along as best as you can. Nice thing about a video is you can pause in places that you want to work longer. You can go back for something you want to look at or try again. And you can fast forward what you don't like. I always start my practices at home with long-held restorative poses. So you can, if you want to, just fast forward to the more movement-oriented part of the practice. Uh, as for me, when I have time, which is usually two or three days a week, I need to start with something that's restful because I do tend to do more active practice and more active classes. So this is a half virasana, half supta virasana. By the way, bunnies might come out. Don't even pay attention to those bunnies. So I've got one leg extended and one leg is bent with the leg internally rotated and the heel is kind of outside of my hip. So I got some space here between my uh, hip and my heel. And then I just lay back onto my bolster. You may need a higher bolster. You may need a lower bolster. Perhaps none is required at all. Hands can go where you like. As I said, this is more of a free-for-all style practice. You can come out of each position as it feels right to you, or you can come along with me and practice in perfect harmony. Nice thing to do is to take the forearms out perpendicular to your body, palms to the sky, and get yourself a nice opening in the external rotators. And I'm going to start my breath here. So you may choose to be more observant of your breath, but I'm going to be active right off the start. So I'm going to inhale and fill up the whole body from the back of my nostrils all the way down to the base of my spine, focusing more on the back of my body. Now when I exhale, I'm going to squeeze up from the pubic bone and through the front of the pelvis and continually lift the muscles up the front of my spine to the heart and then breathe it out Ujjayi style. Part of why I'm employing the breath right off the bat is because this pose can be a little aggravating to the lower back. So when I inhale, I get to create a little freedom and see where I can naturally curve my spine. When I exhale, I get to create that stable deep core line up the front of my body to relieve myself of that curve. If it's causing me any pain, I can breathe in more through the heart a little less freedom down here so I can continually hold that slight engagement up the front of my body and then exhale a little extra engagement. So those are tricks that you can use with your breath, keeping it active but making it work for you at any time. Anytime you need extra stability in a pose, whether it be plank because you're working on strength and your low back dips down towards the floor or something like this. A heart opener with a low back has a tendency to over curve if you're mobile especially. So you can always breathe more into the heart and fill up more space down in the bottom of the body once you get to a pose that's more comfortable and advantageous to your lumbar curve. Now from here I'm starting to feel like the stretch in my left leg is pretty much gone, so I'm just going to tilt to one side, free that leg, shake it out, and then I'm going to do the other side. I want to get up to do this though, so I'm going to cradle my head in my hands and really rest it, use my forearm over here, and then use the exhale because I want to use my core strength, bend, squeeze. Now there's no strain at all 
in my neck. I feel very stable and support. All right, so I'll take this guy over here. And my right quad tends to be tighter, so I picked to do that last. You may have a different way of thinking when it comes to the tighter parts of your body. And for this, I'm going to take the arms overhead. And this is where the breath becomes really important because whenever your arms rise overhead, the ribs tend to pop out, the pelvis tends to pitch forward, and then we've got our tailbone poking way back behind us. So that's going to happen a little bit. If you use that exhale, squeezing from the pelvic floor, lifting into the pelvic diaphragm, that's the basement of your body, right? The pelvic floor. And then your pelvic diaphragm is like the first floor. And then you've got your breathing diaphragm up here, which is a muscle. And <clears throat> that's your second floor. And then your third floor comes through the back of your throat. And then out. So I'm feeling a pretty uh, intense stretch in the quad. So I'm just going to try to, while I am stretching and I'm working my breath, every time I breathe in, I'm going to breathe in some relaxation and just some good intentions into my quad. So when you find parts of your body that are tight or weak, be careful how you react to that. Be mindful that it's merely a piece of information as to how your body is working that day. And it may also be the result of how you've treated your body up to that point. And it could just be, you know, that you woke up after sleeping funny. Um, maybe you truly have an injury or have recovered from an injury. But if you respond to those parts of your body in a more loving way, you know, treat them like you would a, a puppy or a child and be more empathetic and just don't try to force things. That's when your body tightens up, your nervous system gets rigid and fight or flight kicks in and then you can't gain any mobility and you can't open up the channels of strength in your body because now it's in survival mode. So I'm still feeling a stretch here, but the knee is starting to bother me a bit. So I'm gonna come right out of there Again, I'm just going to come to the side, unravel the leg. I'm going to take the head in both hands, bend the knees. <clears throat> now you could roll to one side here. It's fine, especially if you're feeling weak in the core. Otherwise, I'm going to press my feet into the floor. There's my foundation. The deep core line runs from the top of my toes, behind the shins, knees, inner thighs is a big part of your core. I've told people that for years back in my gymnastics days. Um, <clears throat> after reading a, a very obscure article that I can't find anymore, how the inner thighs are often neglected, a big part of your core. And then, of course, to your psoas muscles, which connect to the lesser trochanter, so the inner part of your thigh bone, and then travel up the front of the pelvis and then behind the guts, so to speak, and then connects to the uh, sides of the lumbar and then the T12. Okay, so in essence, your legs start from your core, and that's going to be a big part of what we do today. So whenever we lift legs, step back, step forward, uh, I'm going to wait until I can feel the energetic lifting of the inner thighs up into the hips, and then the pelvic floor line up and continually reach up and then once it hits about the solar plexus that's where I try to move my legs from and I'm telling you if you work that um, you will feel lighter in your legs less tightness in hip flexors less tightness in quads it's a uh, really good for the tensor fascia lata to take some pressure off that guy and a lot of people don't even walk from their core we kind of tuned ourselves out of our core and our hips, and we don't use them. You can tell somebody's going to have back and hamstring and even ankle and foot issues by how much their hips move with them when they walk. All right, so now I'm going to press my feet into the floor. So inhale, foundation. That means I'm going to press everything that I need into the floor more strongly. 
And as I exhale, I'm going to squeeze in and up. And I'm just going to sit up. No strain on the back or neck. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Time to take most of these props away. I'm sure that the bolster will come back. And so will the blanket, but the blocks always remain. These are my friends. So starting in a little cat-cow. So we're going to use that breath to create space and curvature in the spine that's healthy. And then we're going to use the exhale to create length in the lower spine instead of rounding it the wrong direction and taking the tailbone down and towards the front of the mat. We're going to avoid that as much as we can. Length and stability. Okay. So I press my finger pads and then my fingers into the floor. That's important. Anytime you put your hands down, make sure you really feel the bottoms of your fingers and where they connect to the palms making the most contact from index to pinky finger. Inhale, exhale, squeeze, create length around the upper spine, only release the head. And then every time you inhale, invite some softness into your elbows, into your joints, and exhale. Practice inhaling and pressing foundation into the earth. Practice exhaling and drawing the energy up from the earth and all the way up the spine. So inhale, I press the toenail, shins, knees, and hands. Exhale, I press away, lifting from the base of my body. Just continually do that. This is going to inform your whole body throughout this whole practice. So I will remind you, but that reminder is going to go away because the practice is going to get moving. And you're going to be on your own. Now, I had a pretty hardcore aerial class yesterday. My biceps and rhomboids are super tight. So I'm going to take myself a little thread the needle. So I do something called stringing the bow. So I'm going to inhale here, just a normal cow. Right hand, I'm going to exhale, string the bow up my left arm across the chest and then to the sky. And I realize my shoulder doesn't want to go there, so I'm going to take it back down. And then I'm going to inhale at the top. And then exhale, inhale when you get there, fix the hips, exhale it back up, inhale, exhale, a lot of breathing. On the next one, I'm going to stay there and chill out. And remember the right hip's going to want to jut down, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to press more firmly into the left shin. And then you can create a little inner leg, sort of scissoring towards one another. Continually use the breath. If you inhale space into your left sit bone, and then exhale some length from the right side of your tailbone up the body, you'll kind of keep that hip pretty well in place. Now, I usually don't feel it here, but I'm feeling a lot. So I'm going to try and create more space between my ear and my shoulder. I'm going to take the left hand for a bind. So you find the bind that works for you. And then from here, I'm going to internally rotate the left shoulder a little bit, sort of exaggerate it, shrug it up, and then see if I can open it more without letting the right hip dip. That's probably enough for me. I'm going to take it down. And then I'm going to come to Sphinx before I do the other side. And just sort of hang out here. So instead of totally hanging out, I'm not going to let my low back just go dip, dip, dip down into the floor. I'm going to use the breath. So every time I breathe in, I'm going to press my forearms, elbows, hands, toenails into the earth. And then as I exhale, I'm going to squeeze and lift from the inner thighs, the front low spine, all the way up to the heart. And it's going to both create some space and some stability. When you press into your foundation, you also gain a certain pound, amount of stability too. The exhale isn't the only thing that can give you a nice lengthening, not dumping into your joints. Okay, I'm going to use the exhale to turn my toes under and come up to a forearm plank. And then I'm going to breathe. 
You may want to breathe more into the back of your heart. If you're feeling weak, if you're feeling pretty strong, breathe all the way down the back of your body. Create some space. And exhale, squeeze up the front like a little zipper. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, curl up and in. Bend the knees. Start to pull them in. Maybe come to hands. And just walk yourself back. Take an inhale. Exhale, string the bow with the left hand. Inhale at the top. And then exhale. And I'll stay here now. Making sure the left hip stays relatively floaty. So the tendency would be this is an exaggeration. So I just want to make sure that both halves of my pelvis are pretty neutral. I'm going to create space between left ear and shoulder, and then I'm going to bind. If the bind starts to stress out your neck, do you think it's worth it? Probably not. My right shoulder is tighter, so I stay here longer with the bind. I'm going to internally rotate for a moment. Let me see if I can get a little deeper. That helps bypass any potential tearing I might do with a, in a place that's already injured. I'll take it down. And finger pads, fingers, hands. Inhale. Stretch the bottoms of those feet. Exhale, curl that zipper up to the solar plexus and then find downward dog. Inhale, bend your limbs. That's elbows back, knees forward. And then exhale, start to walk your way up to the front of your mat. Bend your knees generously, wider feet than you might be used to, ragdoll. So try to keep the pelvis a fixed point here as your shoulders and perhaps even the sides of the middle of your body start to wave a little bit. You might even want to take those arms and sort of wave them around like some seaweed. Good. Release. Take an inhale. Press your feet more strongly into the floor. As you exhale, squeeze the legs in towards one another and start to lengthen the low spine. Inhale, heart forward, exhale, fold from your center. Inhale. And your next inhale, fix your bra. And as you exhale, make sure you're curling and rising from here, hips over heels, heart over hips, and then inhale, and the limbs can straighten. You can wiggle your hips. Whee! Good. Hands to heart. Inhale, arms up, feet into the earth. Exhale, squeeze in. Bend and squeeze from your core. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, step the left foot back, runner's lunge. Cat cow and runner's lunge. Inhale, make sure there's a little space here. Exhale, bend, curl, and release. Inhale. Make sure it's all coming from the center, your back leg bends because you have strength coming from the base of your body into your solar plexus. On your next one, press into the earth, prepare, exhale, bend and curl. So the ribs come over the hips and then once the heart rises, so do the arms. Exhale, take your fists, yoga fire. Inhale. So if the back leg straightens to the point where this starts to happen, then don't straighten it that far. Try to keep a neutral pelvis here. One more inhale. As you exhale, float the left hand forward wherever you want to put it. Right hand goes back. Scoop it. Exhale, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And then one more time. And if you keep the back leg bent, 
until you organize the upper body, you may find a slightly deeper twist, maybe. Exhale, take the hand down, step back to down dog. Inhale, bend your limbs. Exhale, pull the tail into the body and then the front of the pelvis towards your back and whoo, plank, chaturanga, cobra, or up dog. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, bend your limbs. Exhale, left knee into the chest. Inhale, exhale, left knee to sky. Straighten on the inhale. Exhale, bend and scoop it forward. Cat cow, inhale. A little bit of wiggle this there, just to make sure that you're not locked in your pelvis and you're overextending it. So what happens if you try to do a little wiggle and you don't have room on the inhale? Well, you can take your foot in closer for one thing. Sometimes people step and they're like on a tightrope. And that's not really good because our hips are wider than a tightrope. Some people can do it. You can always take them wider, like train tracks. Anyways. All right, I'm going to stand up. Float the right hand down. Take an inhale and then sweep it, string it, inhale it. Two more times, maybe not, maybe you found the right one right off the bat. And then exhale, take the hands down, step it forward on the exhale from the solar plexus, fold. Inhale the heart forward, exhale, curl and wave up. Exhale, right back down, plant the hands, inhale, exhale, step the right foot back, turn the back foot out, about 45 degrees, more important that you line up your back knee with your toes so they look in the same direction. Bend both legs so the back heel comes up, exhale, curl, ribs over hips, take the arms up and then fix the back leg. And then from here, we're going to... Pretend like we're going to twist over to the left. Inhale, exhale. Take the hands down. Spin the back heel up, step back. Down dog, breathe in. Curl and wave forward. Inhale, bend. Exhale, right knee to the sky. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend and step it forward. Spin the back foot out just a wee. Inhale, bend both legs. Exhale, start to drive up from the left side so as. Inhale, back leg, last thing to straighten. As you exhale, just take it to the side. Any arm position will do. What if your exhale went from here and then inhale? You can take your hands down too. Good. On your next inhale, pause. Exhale, hands down. Squeeze it up to the solar plexus. Step it forward. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold. Take it side to side. And then for a moment, take the right foot on the other side of the left, so both pinky edges are touching. Bend your knees a little bit, or a lot. As you inhale, make sure the heart and the tail can make two lines going opposite directions. So you're totally parallel. So some people are going to have to bend their knees a lot to do that. Good. As you exhale, walk your hands over to the right without letting your left hip come with you. That is the hard part. So if you're engaging the inner thighs in the core line, you'll probably be okay. Once you walk over to the right as far as you can, then you can start to straighten the legs. Just be careful that the back knee doesn't walk out because of the weight of the front leg. And take it over to the center. And take your feet back, hip width, 
step the left foot on the other side of the right. Again, bend a little or a lot. You should be able to have a straight line from base of spine to crown. And then as you exhale, keep that right hip crease back. Walk your hands to the left. And then once you have the freedom to do so, whether it's today or 10 years from now, start to exhale and straighten the legs a little bit or a lot. Continue the pulsing of the breath. And then as you exhale, take the hands down, feet together, toes in and or touching. Inhale the heart, forward exhale, come up to Utkatasana. Now from here, I'm going to do twists, brief little twists, fiery little twists. So I'm going to take my hands in Namaste. As I exhale, I'm going to twist to the right. Inhale to center, twist to the left. My knees are not supposed to come apart at all. So they're totally flush with one another. If that starts to happen, that means you're twisting in your pelvis, which is a no, no. One more on each side. When I get to the center, I'm just gonna hold. And if your arms aren't feeling particularly good, you can take genie arms, otherwise, wherever you like. Trying to keep the sit bones reaching back, not like super back, but not tucking under, that's for sure. The exhale saves my low back here. When I exhale, come down. Inhale, wiggle. Plant your hands strongly so you can take the whole hand down on the floor so you don't have to bend your ankle up. Inhale, prepare, exhale, step or float. Soft landing on the down dog, continue through to plank, chaturanga, cobra up dog, inhale, exhale back, down dog. So those vinyasas you get to take in your own way. So I'm really not going to cue them. That's just a waste of my time. All right, here we go. Here's the fun part. Inhale, bend, exhale, right knee to chest, then to the sky, inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend and scoop, right knee to left elbow. Inhale, exhale, push it back. Inhale, the top. Exhale to the same elbow or shoulder. Inhale, exhale, push it back. Inhale, exhale to the center. Bring it back to the opposite side. Take the shin down or extend the leg. Turn the back foot. Straighten your bow. If you're super strong, you can lift the leg straight. Otherwise, bend your knee. Use the exhale so your back doesn't get involved. <sighs> that bossy low back wants to get into everything. All right, so from here, hands down, knee into chest. Exhale. And then go ahead and just spin the hip open, bend the leg like you're going to kick your left shoulder. When you exhale, see if you can bridge the gap between the tops of your hips and your ribs without pulling the knee back into your body. Exhale. Take it to wild thing or sit on your butt. Bend and scoop, step it forward. Spin your back toes out a way wicked lot. And then walk the hands over to the long side. Do a little dosi -si do here. Both legs bent. Tail back, heart forward. Curl and rise. Arms out for Vera 2. When you're all settled, then the back leg can do its thing. Sweep the right arm. And then continue. Exhale. When you find the right reverse warrior for you, Hold or cradle the hand. Get a deeper stretch in the side body when your arm's bent. Keep your shoulder down. Keep the breath pulsing. Take an inhale. Look down at your front knee. Make sure it's not collapsing inward. Breathe again. Exhale, cartwheel it down. Step it back. Three-leg dog. Shake it out. Keep your leg up or take your feet down. Bend your limbs. Exhale, curl and wave to plank, chaturanga, 
two footed and then back to down dog. Take an inhale, bend your limbs. Exhale, stick out your tongue. Okay, one more inhale. Exhale, left knee to chest and then knee to sky. Inhale, straighten out. Exhale, bend and scoop to right elbow. Breathe. Exhale. Same side. To the center. Then back to the opposite. Turn. Remember your knee can always be on the floor with your shin parallel to the side of your mat. Exhale, squeeze. Exhale, tuck it in, breathe in, and then exhale it out, shake it out. Get some good footing on the right foot. It may have squiggled around a bit. And then try to press the right heel down a little bit, open your hips, kick your own shoulder. Exhale, stabilize that spine, take it over to wild thing. Maybe both legs straight and I like to do that. Exhale, take it back. And then bend and scoop, step to the front of the mat. Turn your back toes up a lot. Not past parallel though, to the back of your mat. One, two, three, both legs bent, stretch it forward, as you're circling your arm, continue to use that breath, so when you exhale you might feel your inner thighs engage, when you inhale maybe your knee drops, a little bit be careful of it going in front of your ankle. Breathe here. Make sure your inner knee is not collapsing. And then cartwheel it down. Step it forward this time. Inhale the heart forward. Exhale, take the hands down. Find crow, whatever way suits you best. Hugging everything into the midline. Use your exhale to shoot only your right leg back. Inhale, exhale, bend and scoop it back. Adjust your right foot if you have to. And then as you exhale, let it out. Inhale, bend your limbs. Exhale, wave it forward to plank, chaturanga, cobra, up dog. Down, dog. Sorry, my mat keeps scooting. It's because I got a mat on underneath it. If I was just using the jade, it wouldn't be scooting. Okay, okay, feet together, Shakti kicks, join me. Watch how my elbows bend, that's important. If your elbows don't bend, you get locked out of the power in your arms, the weight transfer from your feet to your hands, and your shoulders are gonna jam, which we don't like. Inhale. to crow. Squeeze it all into the middle and use the exhale to shoot the left leg back. Kick it up. And then guess what? Child's pose for me. I guess you can do whatever you want, but I'm child's pose and I feel. I'm going to take my arms back. That was an arm heavy beginning. I like to make circles in the supported center. So keeping the breath active, if you need to keep it less active for any reason, that's your choice. Otherwise, try to keep the same rhythm in that ebb and flow of the inner body. I'm just gonna come up. I might get a drink now if I 
have the presence of mind to put one within arm's reach. This is hair fixing asana. All right, so we're gonna get into some side stretch poses here. Have fun. Down dog, inhale bend. Exhale, right knee into chest, to sky, and then straighten, inhale. Exhale, bend and scoop it forward. Spin the back foot just a hair, so knees and toes are in line. Broken pyramids, we're gonna break the pyramids. We're gonna want a pair of stairs, I guess. And as you inhale, try and create space between right sit bone and crown of head. Sorry, I just spanked myself. And as you exhale, curl in, then try and lengthen your spine from the exhale, then straighten the legs as much as they'll go. Turn to the other front leg, you'll feel more stretch here than if you went into pyramid from straight legs right off the bat and then folded forward. So we went bent legs, we inhaled some space in that front hip, we exhaled from the low belly, folded it forward, notice I'm on the inside of my legs, okay, and then I straighten the leg. So now instead of it being a total hamstring killer, it's all along the sides of my hips where I need the most stretch. And I'm also making sure that my sacrum isn't pulling down. If it was, it would look more like this, okay? Now from here, left hand on floor, block. Break your pyramid again. Reach your hand back, your free hand. Take a breath in, exhale, bend and scoop. Organize your body like in a twist. Then straighten the legs. If you have to do that a couple more times, you can Revolved triangle can really hurt if you try to do it from straight legs because that just locks out your pelvis, locks out your whole spine, and it stinks. Press into your back foot a little more strongly. You don't have to lock the knee out like mine is. Good. Now from here, this is the fun part. Hand to hip. Left hand to the block or to the floor. Six to eight inches in front of where it normally would be on the mat. I'm going to turn this into a runner's lunge for a second. My knee's a little over my toe but it's fine for a moment. Exhale, bend, left knee into chest. Inhale, make sure I can have space, tail the crown. And then as I exhale, I'll start to take that leg out. I'm gonna bend both legs. I'm gonna twist from the left side ribs to my right side armpit. Then I'm gonna straighten. This is revolved Ardha Chandrasana, Prabhita Ardha Chandrasana. Continually trying to make sure that this right outer hip doesn't start jutting to the side and it pressing it back, but I can do that with the breath. The breath controls the squareness and the stability in the hips. You might be done. As for me, I'm gonna grab this back leg. It's, we're gonna have to bend, break it down, inhale. And as you exhale, squeeze from the low belly, create a nice zipper in the front of your spine, and then go crazy. Or not at all, maybe don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm going to stand up now. So I'm going to inhale, press into my foundation, exhale, curl, and then start to slowly come up. Inhale when you need it. And then from here, I'm going to switch which hand is grabbing my foot. Take it on the inside. Inhale the arm up to the sky. As you exhale, draw up from the front of the pelvis. Take a moment. And then as you exhale, you can start to zip up the spine as you kick forward. Keep inhaling to pause and correct your foundation. Keep exhaling to find a little more length and kick without compressing your low spine. From here, I'm going to release on an exhale. I'm going to come down. Now, I do a lot of work on one leg in my own practice. I may not do this teaching most classes, so feel free to take a break. The pause button would be really nice right now if you need it. Otherwise, I'm gonna come down, try and keep this more like a seat, right? And I'm gonna find my little flying pigeon. If you have the wherewithal to do this without sitting, you can. It takes a lot of work, and there's no guarantee I can do it today. There we go.
take it down. And then from here, I would just take this into a stretch, give myself a little rest and take advantage of the heat that I've created in the body. Okay, now if you can't do this, then walk your foot out away from you until you can do this fairly comfortably. If you wanna keep going, take your foot in the crook of your arm, take your knee in the crook of your arm. Maybe you're able to sit. You wanna be able to sit flat, so if you're like this, Take it away. You don't need to be rolling onto your sacrum to sit. Chances are you do that enough in the course of a day. So I'm cradling my leg, baby. And then from here, there's a couple of things you can do. I'm not going to do them on the side. In fact, I'm going to be crazy and do it on the other side. You'll see why. So I'm going to cradle the other side because this is the leg that was in the front, that I stood on the most, and it's the most ready. But the other leg was already in position, so I gave it a little extra love, but it's gonna get its turn on the next side of the sequence, okay? I'm gonna pull this back, make it into a backpack. If you can get your arm above your elbow, you're doing pretty awesome. You can also, if you want to, just gradually lift the hip up to get into a good position. Astubakrasana starts here, here, and then here. This, of course, is when the bunny is going to come and get curious. Back up, and then come down. Bunny's not curious yet. This is good. <laughs> and I'm just gonna come back, and I'm gonna take my feet wide and my knees in before the next side. I may not do exactly this sequence in the class because the nature of the pose is fairly intense, but it's there. And I'm going to rock and roll because that's just the type of gal I am. Stand up any way you can. Take your hands down. Hello, crow. And then if you can, instead of that whole jumping to chaturanga, that's really not good for the shoulders. Try to exhale. That feels much better on my shoulder. My shoulder is a great gauge for what's good for you and what's not. Take your vinyasa if you want. Inhale, exhale, curl. Next side, all right. Inhale, left leg. Sorry, exhale, left leg. Then inhale, and then scoop it forward. Take the back foot in just a little or a lot. Break your pyramid. Inhale, space into the left side of your hip. And then as you exhale, take your body on the inside of your leg and try to lengthen from the base of your pelvis. Stay there for a little bit. And then when you're ready and you feel stable, like you can wiggle your hips a little, start to straighten the legs. And then go to the point where you feel like you're going to have to start rounding your lower spine. That's when you want to stop or when you feel intense pain, whatever comes first. I'm gonna take my foot in a little because my left leg's a little tighter, but this is the longest my legs probably ever gone comfortably in pyramid. And that's because I'm learning how to break down the pose and then organize the hips and spine first and then the legs. So I'm gonna stay here a little longer because this is my weaker uh, side in terms of flexibility. And I'm letting the breath inform the pose. So when I inhale and I feel like oh, my left hip's a little round, it's sort of tucking down, I'll bend the knee more. When I exhale, I'll create more length in the spine, a little more fold. And then when you're ready, take your right hand down on the block or floor, bend your knees again, break your pyramid, take a breath, exhale, string your bow, keep your back leg bent. And then when you're in line, Exhale, squeeze from your low belly, create stability, and see where you go. All right, so it used to be that I'd have straight legs, I'd go into it, not locked, straight, straight legs, and then suddenly my hamstring would just catch, I feel this terrible pain. Well, building from the center and then everything around it, organizing itself, is now taking it to different spots. I'm getting a more holistic stretch. 
All right, your choice, right hand on the hand or block. Rear fronters lunge. Take your hand in front a little more. Exhale, knee into chest. Take a breath. Heart and tail should be able to stretch. And then as you exhale, take that leg out. And then from here, right ribs to left armpit. Maybe you bend the legs to do this part. And then straighten them out, right? It's probably the better way to do it. So if you want to go a little further, break down the pose for a second. Breathe. And then exhale from your low belly. And then from here, take it up. Switch hands if you can. If you can't, no biggie. If you never got your hands on your foot, then you can do this with just your leg back. Inhale. Exhale, create length here. Inhale, press into your left foot, and then as you exhale, create stability in that spine as you open. Inhale, pause. Exhale, kick, squeeze. Take it down. Or if you can, ta-da! You can always be resting, you can always be in forward fold, and unlike a real class, you can pause and come back. Finding your hands, hooking your toes. Ta-da! See, clearly I couldn't manage that on this side, <laughs> taking the blocks. And here I can feel my knee kind of giving out, so I'm not gonna attempt that, but I am gonna come to the cradle. Now I already cradled the heck out of this side on the last sequence, but that doesn't mean I can't give it a little love. But it's the left leg's turn now to do its thing. So my left leg is not gonna be as flexible but it's easier for me to hold because my right shoulder is a little unstable. Working on that. Make your little elephant trunk, right? Lift the hip up. down. Ta-da! So what do you think? You up for another sequence? I'm not. Guess what's coming back? The bolster and the blanket. Welcome back. All right, pigeon. This is a good time for pigeon. So I'm going to decide what I want to do here. Let's see. I mean, you can take extra vinyasa sequences if you want. I think I'm kind of done with that at this moment. So line up your pigeon. Make sure that your foot feels comfortable. If you cannot flex it, and I cannot, I point it, and I press the top of my feet and toenails into the floor. It helps stabilize my knee. And again, your breath tells you what to do. So if you inhale, you might... Create a lot of space, especially in the right, in this case, the right hip. As you exhale, you may create some stability and lift in the left side. And you could just totally let go of the breath and not even care, I suppose. Bella, if I can. So feel free to let your stretches 
evolve, and evolve doesn't mean you get lower and deeper. Sometimes it means you back off because for whatever reason, a deeper place is not what your body needs. Continually using the breath for me creates different sensations on the inhales and the exhales. So if you don't feel that, don't worry about it. It may be something that evolves. It may be something that you never feel. And from here, I'm going to bend the back leg with this mess around me. I'm going to grab it. Just make sure that my right hip and my left hip stay pretty much the same. So my left hip's going to want to dip here. So I'm really going to use that exhale to make sure it's not pressing down. That's a little bit much for my knee, so I'm just going to take it back. I think this um, blanket has become more of a nuisance. Sorry. And then from here, this is what I do with the bolster. So I'm going to take my hands here, come out to the back, and as I'm feeling pretty open, and I don't need the bolster for this, I'm going to flip my dog, come into a bit of a wild thing, and then bend my arm, flip it to Chakrasana. I use the exhale for that, and then flip it back. Not the most graceful, but I did everything on the exhale, so it really helped save any potential whatever to my back. And you know, you can exhale as, as uh, stable as you want, and you just don't have the ability to do that. It's not gonna save you from lack of flexibility or strength there. But if you know you can do wheel, and you can flip the dog comfortably, chances are you can flip the dog into wheel. Mm -hmm. a little instruction and a little magic of your Vanda breath. Bend that leg. Don't let the hip dip though. Feel a little bit too much in my knee over just, just a few seconds. I'll come off of that. So I may or may not choose to bail out of this depending on how my shoulder feels. I'll know as soon as I get into a wild thing. Yeah, it's definitely not a happy happy position. So I'm not going to force that one into Chakrasana. I would prefer to be able to do yoga tomorrow and other such mundane activities as putting items into a cabinet. So from here, let's break it down a little bit more. So I'm going to go for spinal twists. Right leg over left Hips are going to go over to the right a few inches and everything falls to the left. You may need to put something under your legs so they're not floating in space. Pressing more into the right shoulder by taking a little more press and mindfulness into the left arm and hands. And then maybe you gaze the opposite direction of your knees. Take this a little longer. I'm just running out of time to do all my chores. So I would take it longer, but I'm going to come up, going to unravel things. I'm just going to kind of do mini windshield wipers. And then left leg over right, hips to the left, and then legs to the right. More weight into the left shoulder blade. 
Yeah, and support your legs if they're floating in space. If it doesn't feel good. Mine are floating a little bit in space on this side. They weren't on the other. So I might choose. If I wasn't so warm and heated up inside, I might very well choose to support them. But I feel pretty elastic at the moment. Now from here I would definitely suggest an inversion of some kind. Many people pick shoulder stands, but I am not many people. So I do make it a habit to practice forearm stand every day because it was a pose that really just took me forever to get without feeling like I was torturing myself. So sometimes I'll do it in the middle of the room, but right now if I do fall over, I can save myself, but I got all these electronics and books, so forget about that. I am going to do it from here, however, I'm going to hold the block because I'm a little tired. I'm going to work on pressing. You can do whatever you want. This is just my thing. pretty much good for me for today. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go into a heart opening Shavasana. Or balls of twine and tennis balls just randomly come out. Say hi. Just an easy one. I'm not going to make a huge setup. I'm going to take the hair out. Palms up. Legs apart. Floppy everywhere. That's it. I'm just going to focus on all the different things that are going on around me. So the sound of the bunny, the dogs will probably start walking their way towards the doorway, cars going by, the incense I burnt at the beginning of this class is still going strong. I'll gladly send you some if you're not local, get it from Salem. I'm just trying to let things drop. In particular, having this sandbag sensation at the top of the hips here is really, really good because we do tend to just overarch and overdo the, the green light response of, you know, the superhero. All right, so just trying to get a little heaviness here. Sometimes I'll actually massage right in between the two hip points there and get into the little squishy bits continually work them up. I might do more stretches too um, if life wasn't calling me. So you can of course do that. And then feel free to let the Shavasana keep going. I'm going to sign off and end the video here so it's not so long and hard to load. But of course do what you need to do. And if you like the video please let me know either by liking, subscribing, writing a nice comment, sharing, whatever. And of course, requests are good too. So just keep communicating and I'll give you whatever it is that you need. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. Namaste.